All right, let's look at these terms here, work, energy, and power, and let's apply some values to this so that hopefully it makes just a little bit more sense. So let's start out with, we have a guy here that's going to pick up a box. Now to add the math to it, we need to know some information about the box. We're gonna say that this box is a one kilogram box and it's got a hook on the top so that this guy can reach down and pick it up, right? He's gonna lift it up. And when he lifts it up, we're gonna say that the height that he lifts it off the ground is going to be one meter. And let's say that this takes him half a second. The time it takes him to get it from the ground to this height is 0 0.5 seconds. So now the question is, how do we apply these concepts of work, energy, and power? Okay. So for the first one, the work question, work is defined as force times distance. So we need to know what force did this person apply and what distance did it get applied over. The distance part is easy. This weight was lifted one meter, but now the question is what force was applied to lift it. As long as we ignore the little bit of acceleration at the bottom and just assume that this person lifted it at a constant speed, then really they're just overcoming the gravity force on this. And if you remember from last unit, when you drop any object, gravity is going to accelerate it at 9.8 meters per second per second. So the force is going to equal mass times the acceleration gravity can produce on it. In this case, we have one kilogram that could be accelerated if it were dropped at this 9.8 meters per second per second. So the force on the box is 9.8 newtons. So that's the amount of force this guy would have to apply to lift it. 9.8 newtons applied over a distance of one meter, let's write this in here, would give us our work. So work equals 9.8 as a number, but then the units, because we did force times distance, newtons times meters, this is now the number of joules of work this guy did in order to lift that weight one meter. Right Now, I want to say this really specifically because I've kind of maybe said it vaguely. 9.8 joules of work were done to the box. Now, the reason I'm being really specific about that is if we come over here to this second concept of energy, energy is needed to do work, but there's also the idea of efficiency. So we have energy that's put into a situation is always going to be some efficiency less than 100% to give us the energy we get out. So how does that apply to this situation? We could ask a question like, how much energy did this guy need in order to do the 9.8 joules worth of work? The easy answer is at least 9.8 joules of energy. But to make this a little more complicated with our math here, we could say that the human body is maybe 25% efficient at converting food energy into motion. So now the question could be, how much energy did this person burn in food energy in order to do the 9.8 joules worth of work? So we could say, how much energy did they have to take in if they're 25% efficient in order to get 9.8 joules out. To solve for that energy in, we'd have to divide both sides by 0.25, which is the same as multiplying by 4. So the energy that this person would have to intake in food terms would be, quick calculator move, 39.2. Now, thinking units here, we divided by a percentage. There's no units on the percentage, so this is still joules. Another way to say this is that this person would have to intake or have 39.2 joules worth of food energy in order to do this 9.8 joules worth of work to the box. Okay, last one over here is with power. Power is defined kind of in two ways. We hopefully can see that there's this close connection between work and energy. So you can divide, 
define power as work divided by time or energy divided by time. For this one, I'm just going to say the work divided by time, like how much power was exerted in the box scenario. So power is equal to the work done divided by the time it takes. This person did 9.8 joules worth of work to the box, and it took them 0.5 seconds to lift it. So you would just be solving there, 9.8 divided by 0.5. That's the same as multiplying by 2, so our power is 19.6 as the number. And then the units. Units would be what we see here, joules per second, but we tend to simplify and call those watts. So putting all this together from beginning to end, we could say, oops, didn't mean to do that. We could say here's a scenario where a person lifts a box. How much work was done to the box? Well, based on the force and the distance, 9.8 joules of work was done to the box. Then we could say, well, how much energy did they have to have in order to do that? Well, based on saying that they're 25% efficient, that means that they'd have to have or use 39.2 joules worth of energy in order to do the 9.8 joules worth of work. And then lastly, in terms of power, we could say that this person put out 19.6 watts of power, or this person showed 19.6 watts of power based on the speed that they did the work. Hopefully that helps put all these pieces together for you in all this math madness.